Today's sermon is entitled Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible. You see that? You see the apostrophe there? Powered by the Holy Spirit. Powered by the Holy Spirit. Mission Impossible. Now, what I want to begin to intimate to you in the Greek, there is an abbreviation used called the dacia. It is more commonly known as the rough breathing sound. It is a rough breathing sound that changes the way you pronounce a word. So instead of, let's say you had the word Ellen, E-L-L-E-N, you would put the rough breathing sound in front of it or the dacia in front of it and it would no longer be pronounced Ellen it would be pronounced Helen Helen rough breathing sound Helen it gives you a breathing sound uh, watch where I'm going now the breathing sound the dacia gives the H sound without having to write the H so you get the rough breathing sound even though you have the E in Ellen you have Helen because of the rough breathing sound and you don't need the letter H. So I'm using the same technique to adjust a word impossible that without this one symbol, the word means something totally its opposite. So watch this now. The word without this apostrophe, you see that? The word without the apostrophe would be impossible, right? But if I take the apostrophe and I'm using it similarly to the dacia or the rough breathing sound, with that, impo with that apostrophe, impossible becomes impossible. Well, watch this now. It's not only impossible, it is impossible. Uh, <laughs> it is impossible. Now, the English apostrophe doesn't have the rough breathing sound, but I'm using it interchangeably with the dacia. So just watch this now. So just as we add a breath to a word, it changes its sound. Listen, when we add the Holy Spirit's breath to our lives, it changes our sound in the world. So when the Holy Spirit adds that rough breathing sound to us, we are no longer just cherry. We are cherry. We are no longer just breath for change. We are breath for change. In other words, we're not impossible. My mission is now I'm possible. I'm possible. Are you tracking with me? So all of these things give us a clear perspective of how much we need the Holy Spirit in our lives to make things possible. Somebody say possible. You need the Holy Spirit to make what was impossible possible. And that's why this sermon is entitled Mission I'm Possible, powered by the Holy Spirit. Because in 2022, what we thought was impossible in 2021, we will discover becomes possible because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Is anybody with me this morning? So let's talk about what is the primary functionality of the Holy Spirit. Put this on the screen. The primary functions of the Holy Spirit is to one, transform people's lives that's number one. And secondly, it is to empower believers to serve him. So let me make this clear to you. First of all, the Holy Spirit's job is to transform you. The Holy Spirit's job is to change you into the image of Jesus Christ. It is the Holy Spirit's job to change your attitude. It is the Holy Spirit's job to make you more secure. It is the Holy Spirit's job to stop you from drinking and cussing and lying and stealing and cheating. It is the Holy Spirit's job to make you more loving, more forgiving. So watch this. If you don't know 
who the Holy Spirit is, or if you don't know how to activate the Holy Spirit, then you will not be changing. You will not be getting better and you will not be adjusting. So the power of the Holy Spirit works with us. In other words, the Holy Spirit doesn't just come in your life and just take over and control you and say, regardless of your cooperation, I'm going to make you like Jesus. No, the Holy Spirit is there in us and wants us to cooperate to make changes in our lives. There are a lot of you who have the Holy Spirit, but you don't use him. So you continue to be a liar. You continue to be, uh, I won't say that. You can help me, Lord. You can hear yeah, Jesus. He caught me. See, Holy Spirit caught me. He says, stop, hold it back, pull it back. He said, you continue to act unrighteously. And we're not all perfect, but that's the point of the Holy Spirit to make us better every year. 2022, you should be a stronger, more effective Christian in this year than you were last year. You should be look, able to look at your life five years ago and say, I am better now than I was five years ago. Let me tell you about the second aspect. The second aspect of this of the Holy Spirit is to empower you. So not only is he to work on you and your attitude and your life and your righteousness, he empowers you to be a believer in the world to reach people. So watch this now. He is the power of your franchise. He is the power of your witness. He is the power of your strategy. He is the power of your business. He's the power of your entrepreneurship. He's the power of your ministry. He's the power of your marriage, your fatherhood, your parenthood, your husbandhood. He's the power of your life. He comes to give you the power to be who he's called you to be and to do what he's called you to do. So don't you dare go into 2022 saying, I don't have the power to do this. A car can't run without gas. A car can't run without battery. That is the power. So the Holy Spirit is the power that makes you move. It is the power that gets you up in the morning. It is the power that creates actions in your life to make a difference. Now, notice the Holy Spirit was also active in creation. The Holy Spirit had to help get creation started. In other words, the Holy Spirit activates. The Holy Spirit activated creation as God spoke things into existence. All right, I got to I got to I got to keep moving. Check this out. He is two primary aspects, but there are three types of spirits. There are three spirit spirit types. All right? The first spirit type is the human spirit. The first spirit type is the human spirit. And the human spirit is our spirit. So within us, within us, we have a spirit. We have a spirit in us, which is just ours. Got nothing to do with God. Got nothing to do with the devil. It's our spirit. And the Holy Spirit, there's a union and a bond that is to be formed between the human spirit and the Holy Spirit. It is the demonic spirit that seeks to break this union. So let's go back. The first one is human spirit. The second type is a demonic spirit. So those are the spirits that come from the devil. That is your oppressor, your opposition, your enemy. And then the third spirit type is the spirit of God. So God's plan for our life is to create a union with your spirit and the spirit of God. So God wants us to unite with one another and to be effective in the earth. Watch this now. The demonic spirit then tries to come between God's spirit and our spirit to not get us to connect. I'm talking to you. I'm coming down your street that you, listen, we don't have action. Remember the whole point of the Holy Spirit is to conform you and to give you power to act in the world. Some of you aren't active because you're allowing the demonic spirit to get between you and the Holy Spirit. Ah, oh, God. Haven't you ever wondered why you said what you said? And it was too late. You spoke it. And now you're in trouble because you allowed the spirit of the devil to get 
in your marriage. You allowed the spirit of the devil to get in your situation with your parenting, in your job situation. You allowed the devil to influence your mind to get you to say and to do stuff you shouldn't have been doing. Watch this. Here, let me make this. D-Lo, would you help me, D-Lo? All I'm trying to say is that the, the spirit of God tries to get you to act right and the spirit of the devil tries to get you to act wrong. Both of them are trying to create actions on your part. So if your life is more wrong actions, then your life has been powered by the devil. If your life is actions toward goodness, then your life is powered by the spirit of God. Let me say it this way. The Holy Spirit does not come on the scene till the New Testament. We don't see the Holy Spirit fully formed until we get into the book of Acts. He comes down, he falls down in Acts. So that's why they call it the Acts of the Apostle, because now the apostles have power. Power creates action. Uh, I hope you get this. The Holy Spirit gives the power for us to be able to act. The Spirit's moniker is breath. It is breath or wind in the Old Testament, and as, it, as its name is, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is a wind. It is known as a breath. Watch this now. Pay attention. I'm coming down here. Watch this, Lawanda. But you ask why in some places, listen carefully, Joy, you ask in some places why the Holy Spirit is called the Holy Ghost. Oh, so we have Holy Ghost, we have Holy Spirit, because a ghost is considered a spirit. Ah, watch this now. A spirit can be considered a ghost. So we use them interchangeably. So when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we're talking about the Holy Spirit who technically could be the Holy Ghost. Are you tracking? So we in Western culture, listen, we in Western culture, Culture see ghost as negative when it could simply be a spirit. Now, watch this now. Let me educate you. I want to make sure that you understand that, listen, I, you know, I don't, I, you know, some people say, well, houses are haunted. Maybe there's a spirit. There's a ghost in there. I don't know. And I, but I don't completely rule it out. Um, I, I don't know that once the spirit leaves the body, it can linger anywhere as if God doesn't know where to put them. You know what I'm saying? It, it seems strange that once the spirit leaves the body, it has unfinished work to do, or just got to go around the earth and haunt people's houses and stuff like that. I don't know. And I don't know if the devil has control over the lost spirits enough to be able to let them do that. So watch this now. So watch this now. So it is more likely that you are not necessarily in count. This is my belief. I'm not, you know, writing this in stone. It is more likely that if you're experiencing some spiritual sensation or some ghost of some type, it would either be the spirit of the living God on the good side or an angel, which is spirit on the, the, the on God's side or a demon on the devil side or an imp or the devil uh, 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 demons which serve as counter angels to God on the devil side. So there could be things in the spirit realm that operate around you. And what are they all trying to do? They're trying to get you to act some kind of way. Are you tracking with what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to get you to see, don't be scared. Now, don't get scared completely. I'm just trying to show you. Now, remember, the Holy Ghost has power. The most notable, listen, but the most notable attribute is this. The most notable, let me share this with you. The most notable attribute of the Spirit is life. The Holy Spirit is the Lord and the life giver. So in other words, listen, you can't act if you ain't alive, right? So actions are response to being alive. If you are alive, you should act. Remember Psalm 150, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. In other words, if you're breathing, if you're alive, then praise God. 
So in the Old Testament, the spirit was used as an empowering entity upon God's servants. But in the New Testament, listen, in the New Testament, the spirit is viewed as developing further as a person. So in the Old Testament, he was like a spirit lurking around, you know, that dropped on people and empowered them. No, but now in the New Testament, he is more refined as an actual person. The New Testament talks about the Holy Spirit as a person. So this is how we are to see him today as the person who is the link between the a God of power with us in the world. So the Holy Spirit is the link between God and us in the world. Are you tracking? So what I'm trying to get you to see is, let me just kind of recap. You have a spirit which has power to create action in you. And that spirit is not just an ethereal ghost. It is a person, the third person of the Godhead, who happens to live inside of you. It's going to get juicier. So he becomes the link. Watch this now. The Holy Spirit is the link between the God of power and your impact in the world. So if you do anything in the world and you want to make impact, you have to have the Holy Spirit who links you to God. You want all of heaven backing your business, backing your marriage, backing your children, backing your ministry. You want all of heaven backing you. So the Holy Spirit is our link. Watch this. Put this on the screen. The Holy Spirit, number one for L, is our life. He is our life. He is then our I, which is our inspiration. The Holy Spirit gives us life. Once we receive Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit enters our hearts and he gives us life and then he inspires us. Inspiration means he gives you good thoughts. He makes you think stuff is possible. That's all I'm saying. Inspiration makes you think it's possible. When I'm inspired, I believe I can do anything. Number three, he's the navigator. In other words, the Holy Spirit comes in your life as the in in link as the navigator who helps you get to where you're trying to go to. He leads you to all truth. He helps you meet the right, meet the right people. He helps you establish the right relationships. He helps you be in the right place at the right time to do God's will. And then finally, number three, four, he is the K, the link of the K of link as the keeper. The Holy Spirit keeps you. He is the keeper of your soul. Oh God, I feel him now. Hallelujah. So you have the link, this full link that the Holy Spirit keeps you. The Holy Spirit keeps your life. He preserves you. He covers you. He protects you. So watch this now. When I talked about the demonic spirits spirits earlier, the Holy Spirit is going to keep you. So don't worry. Don't worry. That's why I don't believe believers can be possessed by demonic spirits. I don't think a demonic spirit can come get in your body and take up residence and you're saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't believe that. But the demonic spirit can influence you. He can taunt you, get in your mind, influence you to say and act and do different things. I don't think he can come in and live and just be controlling you. No, because Jesus broke that power when we were unsaved. Yes, he could do that. But now that you're saved, all he can do is work from the outside. He can try to put things around you. That's why he said, why does so-and-so pop up now? Why is he calling me now? I, girl, I was just trying to get my life together because the enemy is popping stuff in your life because they can't get in your life, but he works around you. Oh, this is good teaching. I'm going to get this tape myself. So he is the power of our missions. He's the power of our missions. Now watch this one. I'm, I'm going to go TV on you. Little Ben, you know, I always got a cinematic presentation. So check this out. Now, I want you to understand I was watching Neo uh, in The Matrix and the it's the new one, the latest one called Matrix the resurrection and he had this power that was a strong force upon others and it protected him and it shielded him now here's what i want you to understand we have a similar power ah uh, yeah we little neos no we little jesuses no we are filled believers with the spirit of god we don't know it but it protects us and it shields us it works but we can't see it as the 
Bible said in the Gospels, the Holy Spirit, you can't see it, but you can see its impact on the world. So when the wind blows, the trees move. You can't see the wind, but you see its effect. And what I'm trying to say is that the Spirit is always with you. You can't see it, but you know he's there by the impact you're having on what's around you. Oh, somebody ought to say preach PC. But no, Neo got hit. Here's what I want you to understand. In the movie, Neo got jacked up. Neo got hit in the face. Neo got thrown into the wall. Neo got beat up. But here's what I'm trying to get you to see. But this shield worked at crucial times that saved his life. It is not, well, God, hallelujah. It isn't that we walk around in a bubble, untouchable by the enemy, nor does it mean that when our enemies fail, they won't try again. It is a constant and relentless battle to keep us from doing what God has called us to do. And what I'm saying is sometimes the enemy will attack you and he may get the best of you. But when Neo used his power, the power was always there to protect him long enough and well enough to keep him alive. Well, what is the spirit's power? The power is to give you life. He keeps you alive. Why? Why does being alive matter? So you can continue to be who God called you to be and do what God has called you to do. Is anybody tracking? So the enemy may get the best of you on Saturday, but hang around. I'll be back on Sunday. Come on, somebody. Say mission I'm possible. Do you get what I'm saying? That rough till that that rough dossier, that rough breathing sound makes what was impossible possible. You got the best of me last year, girlfriend, but stick around. I'll be here tomorrow. In other words, job, you let me down. You fired me. You terminated me. But with the grace of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to find a new job and God is going to sustain. In other words, ah, God, Paul said like this, we are perplexed, we, but we're not cast down. We're, we're this and we're not destroyed. And, and all of these things happen, but the devil doesn't have enough power to knock us out. The Holy Ghost will keep us. Why, wow, God, Job even said, Said, you know, well, I just want to die. Just I can't, I can't. And and the devil came up and said, Well, I let me have Job. You're protecting him. He said, You can have him, but you can't take his life. Why? Because the Holy Spirit, only God, only the Holy Spirit controls when your life starts and when your life ends. So the devil doesn't take your life as a believer. God releases you when it's time to go. Now, the whole matrix parallel has similarities to biblical aspects. The oracle, remember the matrix, the oracle, that was God, right? That was the one, the all-knowing one. Neo was the chosen one. Zion, the people of God, right? Uh, who comes to save the world. It's all a parallel, y'all. I'm just using it to give you an illustration to help you know what I'm talking about. That's all I'm trying to do. So let's look at scripture, and I want to show you something that you can refer to to help you understand the power that you have so your mission becomes I'm possible. Come on, somebody. Look at the text as we look at verse number one of Acts 1, uh, verse number one through eight. And it said, the first account I composed, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. And what I want you to see first is all that you and I have the power to do this work. We have the power to do this work. Verse number two says, he has uh, until the day when we, he was taken up to heaven after he had by the Holy Spirit given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. So the Holy Ghost commands or gives orders or instructions. The Holy Spirit is a messenger of God. He is a link or a liaison. So if you look at verse two, it says until the day when he was taken up to heaven after he had by the Holy Spirit given orders to the apostles. So the Holy Spirit gave orders to the apostles that he had chosen. So he gave orders, so watch this now, the Holy Spirit can speak to you for God. When you get a message from God, it comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives you commandments or instructions 
from God on how you should act. So the Holy Spirit, again, is your link or your liaison. Are you tracking with me? So let's look then at the next verse. The next verse says, to these, all, he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the father had promised, which he said, you heard of from me. So five, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So verse five talks about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. First of all, in verse two, we saw how the Holy Spirit acts as a messenger to give us instructions on how to act. But if you saying to yourself, well, I, don't, I can't, I don't, I'm scared. I'm, I don't know. I, 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 excuse, excuse, excuse. Then in verse five, he says, John the Baptist baptized with water, but the Holy Spirit, Jesus baptized with the Holy Spirit. So what does the water baptism do? What is a water baptism? Water baptism identifies that you are saved. When you get baptized in public at church, it means you're saying to the public, pub, public, to the public that you are a believer in Jesus Christ, that you're saved. So you're showing them. Watch this now. Same scenario. When you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, what you're saying is, I identify with the power of God. I identify with the agenda and the kingdom of God. So when Jesus baptizes you in the Holy Spirit, you become unified. Remember I told you, he try, his spirit tries to unify with our spirit. So we get baptized. So for all your excuses saying, well, I, okay, you, you told me to do it, but then I can't do it. And he says, no, yes, you can because you've been baptized. We are joined together. Are you tracking? So it's part of your commissioning. It is part of your mission. And it signifies that you are united with God. Come on, let's go to the next one. So then the next verse says in verse six, so when they had come together, they were asking him saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? In other words, all right, if I do this, are you going, are you going, are you going to be, you know, set up your kingdom? Are you going to be coming? And then seven says, he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or epochs, which the father has fixed by his own authority. But here it is verse eight. But until then, until I set up my kingdom, but you will receive what? power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the uttermost parts of the earth. So what I'm trying to explain here is that in verse eight, you receive power after Jesus is gone, after church is over, after your Jesus encounter after you get saved, oh, I accepted Jesus, oh, hallelujah. You join forces with the Holy Spirit and you receive power to execute the plan on your life. So it becomes, here's what I'm saying, Shauna, it becomes mission impossible because I have now been joined with the Holy Spirit. And I want you to look at your situations in life and I want you to start saying it's possible. Oh, how, come on. How about anybody who watched Angels in the Outfield? Angels in the outfield. Remember he said he would stand out there and he say, and, and he could see angels on the baseball field, the angels. And he said, the little, the little black kid would say, it could happen. It could happen. Nobody else believed, but see, that's what I'm saying. Nobody else sees the Holy Ghost. All they can see is the impact of what you do. Stop arguing your case with people who don't believe you. Just show them the impact. Show them your degree. <laughs> show them that your marriage has lasted 25 years. Show them that God blessed you with the new ministry. Show them that you prayed your way out. Show them that God healed you. No, stop arguing with people. They can't see it. They can't see the work, the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. It is a spirit. He is a spirit, but they can see the impact of what happened. So your life becomes possible 
once you unite. Well, verse number eight, put it back on the screen real quick. Verse number eight says, will you receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. There it is. Both to uh, in Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. So first of all, the Holy Spirit helps you be a witness. He helps you talk. Remember, Moses complained, I stutter, I can't talk. God said, be quiet, boy, I'm going to help you. And also, all this, you can't communicate. God can help you communicate. He helps you be a witness. He helps you testify. He helps you share his life through yours. That's the purpose of action. My action should show the witness of God's work in my life. Well, who are you showing it to? Who are you showing it to, Sharon? Who are you showing it to, Big Ben? See why? Who are you showing it to? You're showing it to people every day that you meet. That's your goal. You've been given this power to tell your story through your life. People at the coffee machine want to see how you respond to sister so-and-so who cussed you out. They are watching your response. So you demonstrate as a witness the work of the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. It's okay. It's okay that you messed up this week. It's okay. Your coworker saw you, you responded negatively, but here's how you change that. Two months from now or next year, let the same situation happen. Let your same coworkers see how you respond. That's the glory. That's giving God the glory. Stop losing your life over making a mistake. Just get better. That's all I'm saying. Don't go tripping out saying, I can't come to church because I'm living in sin. Bring your living in sin self to church and allow the power of the Holy Ghost. And that's what churches need to preach more. Stop talking about blessings so much. And let's talk about the power of the Holy Ghost that gives you the ability to make money and to get blessed. So this allows you to be a witness. And then not only this, the Holy Spirit affects your geography. Oh, I used to love geography class, believe it or not. I was a good student in class. But nonetheless, the Holy Spirit helps your geography. The Bible said you will become, become witnesses where? In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and all the most parts of the world. So wait a minute. So God is saying, I I'll give you power to be all over the world. Come on, somebody. God is saying, I'm giving you power to be all over the world. Well, what is Jerusalem? That's your home. What is Judea? That's your neighbor. Samaria, your next door, your co-workers. Well, what's the uttermost part? Strangers, enemies. Are you afraid to travel? Are you afraid to step out on faith? Are you afraid to go for that degree? Are you afraid of the promotion? You shouldn't be. You have the power to cross borders. You have the power to go to other regions. God said, take my story everywhere you can go. Everywhere you can go. That's Ebonics. He says, take it everywhere. If you can dream it, if you can believe it, kudos to you travel agents out there. Kudos to you who are hotel bookers. Kudos to you. Help make people accommodated. Help get people on a boat. Help people get on a plane. Help the saints of God find a way to reach other territories. And I don't care. I'm tired. I don't want to just I, when, listen. After a while, I'm tired of talking to my own family. I'm tired of talking to the same people. Lord, expand my borders, increase my sphere of influence. Because why? Because you gave me the power, not just for Jerusalem. You gave me power for other regions. Well, then use it. Are you tracking? So we have a geographical advantage because God can be everywhere at the same time. And that's awesome. He said, I can be everywhere at the same time so I can make a blessing happen in China. I can make a blessing happen over in the Bahamas while you in California because I can be, every, I can set, I can coordinate, the coordinate. I can coordinate it all because the Holy Ghost is not limited to your church. All right, so let's look a little deeper. I got to wrap this up. I'm going, I'm trying to teach today. Let me wrap this up. Look at Acts chapter two, verses one through four, and we can see when he comes and what the Holy Spirit looks like. So let's talk about how do we see him when he happens to, to empower us and, and what that actually looks like. So Acts two, verse one says, uh, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. When he comes, 
How do you get the power? Let's talk about that. The spirit fell when they were all together in one place. Look at verse two. Suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind. There it is, spirit. It's a form of a wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. So the spirit fell. Verse number three. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire distributing themselves as they rested on each one of them. And verse four. And they were filled with with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. So look at verse number one. Let's talk about this. Uh, verse number one, so let's talk about when he comes. Let's talk about this. How do I know? PC, how do I get this Spirit? Lisa, Lisa, you want to know? You want to know? Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> this is how you know. When your life, the Bible said they were all on one accord. They were in one place. Let me put it on the screen. Uh, uh, they were all on one accord and they were all in one place when they were together in one place. This is what we have to acknowledge. The spirit falls when we are all in one place. Listen to me. When your life begins to line up into a single focus of purpose, your power increases. Watch this now. This is practical. As long as you're dating eight people, you're all over the place and you reduce your power. Watch this now. Even when you're on Wi-Fi, every time you put another device on Wi-Fi, you reduce the strength of the power. When we're teaching audio, when we're lining, plugging in lines and cords, the more cords you plug in, you reduce the power, the force of the audio. So all I'm trying to say is that when your life becomes honed in, the gospels talk about having a single eye, being focused on one thing. When you're set like flint to please God, let your 2022 be about narrowing it down to one thing. The psalmist said it like this. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I can't quite quote it as it is. He says, one thing I have desired of then, that is to dwell in the house of of the Lord forever. In other words, he said, there's one thing I want, God. There's just one thing in 2022 that I need to be focused on. So everything about your life, you have to find a way to get your marriage, your job, your income, your friends, all of your sick situations must come together in a single purpose. Your friendships should line up with your purpose. Your job should line up with your purpose purpose. Your marriage should have a purpose. Your children should act right because they affect your family purpose. So what I'm trying to say is when you're all in one place, ah, uh, watch this, and when you're all on one accord, so place and accord means in the same place, but in agreement because y'all all in the house, but none of y'all get along. Ain't no power coming. You can be, you say, a man says, you know, people used to say this, uh, they, they still say it today, a man say, do, do, one wife say, do you love me? Say, yeah, I love you. I come home every night. Well, what does that mean? Okay, you sleeping at home every night, but so what? We don't get along. You still stubborn and ornery. You still cussing and acting up. You still abusing people and, and doing different things. And she ain't so good either. So I ain't just about him. She, she acting up too. She got a mouth on her and a neck that will pop you. So wait a minute. The point is you can be all in one place, but still not on one accord. So the goal is to be in one one place under the same roof, but all in agreement on one accord, get on the same page. That simply means the more your life lines up with the word of God, the more power of the spirit is manifested. So the more your life begins to agree with the word of God, the more power you get. The more your life focuses on pleasing God, the more power you get, the more Neo you become. <laughs> when our lives become in order, when we, when we get our lives in order, we get more power. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of having 
having people be the power I need. If you don't have the power, you have to go to people and ask them to do it for you because they have the power. Don't you remember Dukes and Hazard? I got the power. Hanley, Hanley, uh, the, the mayor, I forget his name. But uh, you remember that? So he has the power. Or listen, you have to go to a bank to ask for money or to ask for a loan. Why? Because they have power that you don't have. And so you have to go to a boss and say, well, can I have days off or can I have a promotion or can I have more money? Why? Because they have the power. Oh God, this is good. I don't want to ask people for power in my own life anymore. How about this one where you ask somebody to be your friend? Would you be, would you be my friend? Would you hang out with me? Because your association with them increases your influence and your notoriety among other people. So what you're doing is you're getting friendships to increase your stop asking people for permission to act oh that's good stop asking people and bosses and jobs and banks for permission okay the bank said no does that mean God won't do it won't he do it it means it's still possible it's mission impossible it doesn't matter that the bank said no ask another bank B of A said no well ask somebody else ask Citibank ask don't stop because someone said no apply your dossier, apply your rough breathing sound and change impossible to I'm possible. Are you tracking with me? Stop asking people for power and start a life. Listen, debt owns you. You can't do nothing because you in debt. You owe so much money, you can't do this. That's power. The banks have a credit card company has over you. Take your power back by aligning your life with the word of God, getting the Holy Spirit's power, which makes you make better choices about how you spend your money. You get a budget and your FICO score goes from 300 to 800. And so it's all good. You get your power back. Then you walk in the store and you say, I want that. I want that. I want that. And then when they run the card, ain't nobody coming back to you and say, court decline, sir, court decline. No, they're saying, oh, all is good. Just sign right here, Mr. Smith. I'm telling you, get your power back. Stop Stop letting banks control. Stop letting people control. Ooh, watch this. Here I come. Woo, arrow in the kitchen. Here it comes. Stop letting family control you. When you have a family that controls your power, you have not allowed the Holy Spirit to elevate you to the place you should be in God. Somebody ought to say, ouch, you know that that's good teaching. We must we must start, listen, aligning our lives. We must start aligning our lives with the word of God. We must get lined up with what he wants for our lives in our present situations. And then that way we become the head and not the tail. Look at this, verse number two. Look at verse number two says, and suddenly there came from heaven. What is the Holy Spirit like? Came from heaven a noise a violent rushing wind filled the whole house where they were sitting. And so this, this Holy Spirit is like a wind. It's when the time of Pentecost was fully come. In other words, it reached the amount of days. So notice it. Let me see. Uh, verse number one says, when the day of Pentecost had come, when the amount of days had reached, when the Pentecost had come, that's what I want you to see. When the Pentecost had come, when the days were complete, there came a mighty when here's what I'm getting you to see. Listen, when it's your time, when it's for you, watch this, to act. Come on, you know this little Ben. When it's your time, when they say, what do they say? Action, roll them. It's your it's your cue to go. Ah, God, what I'm trying to get you to see is that when it's your time to be or do what God has called you to do, the power will show up. Don't be scared of anything that you have been called to do because when they say action, the spirit will fall because you have reached the amount of days. In other words, that power has matured. In other words, you're being faithful all in 2021, getting the word, applying the word, praying and doing the, what Pastor Cherry instructed you to do has brought you to 2022 where it's not about training anymore. It's about action. You are going to the field. This ministry is sending you to the field. And guess what? The Bible said when he came, 
came, it made a sound. In other words, it's like wind. The Holy Spirit comes when you're in one place on one accord, and when he comes, this is what he sounds like, like a wind, like a spirit. It makes noise. In other words, watch this, you're noticeable. In other words, God, sometimes I watch movies and the acting is so bad, I don't pay attention. I'm telling you, your acting will be so good, people will be mesmerized. People will begin to look at your business and look at your product and look at your life as if in wonder to say, how can I get some of that? Do you understand the difference between a Merle Streep and somebody, I won't say any other names, I don't want to put nobody on blast, but you can tell the difference between good singing and bad singing, good business and bad business. You can tell the difference in people who have practiced and people who don't. You can tell the difference between a LeBron James and a, and never mind, you can tell the difference between people who have worked their craft and allowed their craft to work their life into alignment. They have one goal and one mission, and you will not be successful in 2022 as long as your mind is all over the place. Pleasing everybody. Every time auntie called, there you go, jumping on. Every time your son called, there you go, jumping to do that. Every time your wife, it's there you go, jumping. Every time the job wants you to stay overtime, there you go, jumping. Everybody else is pulling your strings when you have the power. We say, well, if I don't go, I'll lose my job. Well, I'll hold on with that. Is God God or is the job God? Make up your mind on who you're going to serve. It makes a sound. It's like when people ought to respect you. Then the Bible said it filled the room. The text said it filled suddenly heaven and they were filled. The house was filled where they were sitting. So the spirit has the ability to create capacity. It fills stuff. So the Holy Spirit fills up the room. The Holy Spirit fills your house. The Holy Spirit, in other words, it takes up room. Oh God, listen to what I'm saying. It takes up room, which means you don't have room for toxicity. You don't have room room for the lion x if you don't have room for the shenanigans at the job you don't have a room for the lion the stealing and you don't have a room for the cheating and the sexing you don't have room why because the holy spirit feels god talk it i feel the man ah, the holy ghost ought to feel your life he ought to feel you to capacity don't they tell you when you can't get in they say we're filled to capacity that's what the holy ghost does he feels your life to capacity where the devil can't get in don't let the spirit in be filled with the spirit that's what the text says in Ephesians 5 be filled with the spirit making melodies in your heart singing songs and praises and hymns so it has capacity it can be seen in common items so in other words it said what did it say let's see verse number four but verse number three, four said, there appeared to them tongues and fire distributing themselves and they rested on each one of them. It, it appeared like tongues of fire distributing themselves. In other words, it can be seen in common items. The Holy Spirit can be seen in things that we identify with. So don't make it so deep. Don't, don't make it so deep, Preachy Cheryl. Hi, Preachy Cheryl. Terry, don't make it, don't make your religion so deep. Make it something that people can identify. This is a, a, a like tongues of cloven, a uh, uh, fire on their heads. It takes common items. It fills rooms and it fills people. So watch this. The Holy Spirit not only fills people, it fills places. Ah, God, listen to what I'm saying. I'm asking, I'm telling you in your home, don't only let yourself be filled with the Spirit, but walk around your house and fill your house with the Holy Spirit. Go into your kid's room. Uh, get on one accord in that room, you and your husband or whoever's in that house or just you if you're the sole life giver, house giver, get in that room, get in one place, one accord and ask the spirit to fall in that bedroom. Woo, and watch the Holy Ghost make him or her uncomfortable. Your son or daughter won't be able to sleep. They might change their mind about smoking weed. They might change their mind about getting in that car. They might change their mind about going over so-and-so's house. This spirit has the capacity to fill rooms and fill people. The Bible said that they spoke and appeared to them in tongues, fire distributing themselves. And then verse number four said they were all filled. The Holy Spirit began to speak with other tongues 
tongues as the Spirit gave us. So the Holy Ghost can speak. So he will speak through you. He can talk. It has location renderings. The Bible says later on in verses 5 through 12, he said, you have men from over here. You have men from this country. You have men from this country. And guess what? They all were able to understand each other. In other words, nobody needed an interpreter. The Holy Spirit can help you understand people you don't understand. Do you get what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit transverses location renderings. He can travel to all different regions. So my point is, you, you say, well, I don't know. I'm not familiar with this. I don't know about this situation. I don't. I'm telling you, God's Spirit has the power to make a language you don't understand understandable. And I have no doubt, let me tell you something, if I was ever trapped in uh, Asia somewhere or uh, some or uh, let's see uh, Belize if I or wherever sp- Italy and I can't speak Italian if the Holy Spirit needed to get me a message in Italian the Holy Ghost can interpret the understanding of the message and let me know what God is trying to tell me are you tracking put the scripture back on the screen so I want you to be able to understand this aspect of God being able to talk to us and help us. So as the spirit was giving them utterance, they were able to speak with different tongues. So let's look at this last verses and wrap this up. Verse number 15, for these men are not drunk as you suppose for it's only the third hour of the day, but this is what was spoken of through the prophet Joel. And this shall be in their last days. God said that I will pour forth my spirit on all mankind And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. He's going to pour out his spirit. 18, even on my bond slaves, even on, I'm going to paraphrase, even on people who were slaves, even on people who had babies out of wedlock, even on people who got a criminal record, even on people who messed up big time. He says, I'm going to pour my spirit. You qualify both men and women. I will in those days pour forth of my spirit and they shall prophesy. And then verse 19 says, and I will grant wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below. In other words, it's going to happen up in heaven. It's going to happen on earth below blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Listen to me, beloved. When I say this power was so unique on this day, people thought they were drunk. People thought the believers were drunk because they were so filled with the spirit. In other words, something about you should be so noticeable. It was noticeable. It should be a difference maker. The appearance you should change. You ought not look like a pimp anymore if you've been saved for 20 years. You ought not look like a what do you fill in the blank? Okay. You ought to change. There ought to be a difference in how you look. The Holy Spirit can move so much that Paul had to write about it in Corinthians that when outsiders come to our church, he was saying, he was saying, this Holy Spirit is so radical. People will think you crazy. He says in Corinthians, Paul had to say, look, you're speaking in tongues. You're talking about speaking in tongues. When, you can, people, when outsiders come to your church, he said, don't speak in tongues because they might think you crazy. They won't know what you saying so prophesy in english so everybody can understand i'm telling you the holy ghost can get so control of you get in power of you that people will think you are crazy why 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 we don't see that why we don't see a big outbreak why we don't see something like azusa street a, a revival why won't why won't we see that because people aren't being filled with the spirit people aren't operating in the fullness of god's power and so we just walk around quoting scriptures and you know singing these little melodies and hymns thinking you are all right you won't put in the work the work is getting on your face sacrificing fasting turning down plates giving up things that you know god has called you to give up you've got to be in a position to demonstrate power to the world nobody respect you nobody respect you why because you don't demonstrate power you don't demonstrate change you want to mentor somebody you want to help change somebody's life and they don't see your life changing how are you going to tell me how to save money and you broke and you don't have a savings in your account how in the world can you mentor me on a financial astuteness and you don't even have a house and a car i'm telling you we have got to demonstrate the power that we say we possess and the only way we can do it is by the power of the Holy Spirit 
My point, listen, my point is the power is so evident. People can recognize its power and you have to be careful with how you use it because people will look at you and they can be, you know, they'd be like, oh, something wrong with you. And there are some churches, there's some ministries where you think like, oh, because I'm so anointed and I'm so powerful. Look, keep it in. The- yeah, you full of power, but don't roll your eyes back and don't start shaking like that. Just be stand up, be still and be full of the power and say, if you cross that line, devil, in the spirit, I got something for you. You don't have to work. Do, 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 do you know why they call Called priests for exorcisms? Do you know why they bring the holy water? Do you know why? Because we bring power. We bring the power to create an exorcist, to make the demon leave. I'm telling you, you can walk up in places and tell the devil to go to hell. You can walk up in places. Listen, wait uh, when you're filled with the spirit. When you're in one place on one accord and you've submitted your life and lined it up with the word of God, you can start telling jobs. You can start telling telling situations. You will not act up today. You will not get the best of me. I will not respond that way. You are a possessor of power. This Holy Spirit is a sign gift. Speaking in tongues is a sign gift. When there are doubters around, that's when God does something miraculous. Believers don't need signs. We have it already. But when there are doubters around, that's when God gives us signs. So the evidence of the Holy Spirit isn't really for believers. We should know we're filled already. That's what I'm trying to get. Don't come to church and try to act all spiritual and deep. I know you got the Holy Ghost. I, I ain't, the Holy Ghost ain't questioned with you. You got the power. All of us got the power. But when I'm out there in the hood, when I'm on the street, when I'm around folk who are on crack or shermed out or on amphetamine or whatever this stuff is at, out there on the street right now, pithvethasol, I can't even, what, what the opioids, all of those other stuff, fentanyl, that's them now, all that other stuff they take, they take it, and heroin and all that. When I'm out there with that, people need a sign. Do you get what I'm saying? People need something miraculous. God dog it, I feel him. People need to see God do something powerful. And that's when he brings the power. When you're out there with the unsaved, that's when he will show something and show a sign. But when you're around believers, I don't expect a whole lot of miracles to happen in church because we all should have it. So the evidence of the Holy Spirit is for non-believers. So here's my concluding thoughts. Here's my concluding I'm going to let you go, Ben. I, I, I know you got to go. I know you got to go. Here you go. Here's my concluding thoughts. Listen to this. With the Holy Spirit empowering our lives and transforming us into the uh, image of Christ, our mission becomes possible. So ultimately, with this power, with this Holy Spirit, our mission becomes possible. Should you choose to accept it, your mission will (laughs) self-destruct. This message will self-destruct. Listen, your mission is possible. What is your mission? What is your goal for 2022? What is your desire? I'm possible. Say that every day. Get up in the morning and say, I'm possible. Not it's possible. Not they're possible. I'm possible. Ooh, that's a powerful statement. What does that mean? I'm possible means my highest version of God's design for me is possible. Me being the best person who God created me to be is possible. It is possible for me to live better. It is possible for me to lose weight because it is healthier for me. It is possible for me to stop cussing, drinking, lying. It is possible for me to be a better husband, to be a better parent. It is possible. There used to be a cartoon called Kim Possible. Anybody remember the, the cartoon, Kim Possible? She was a girl running, ticky, 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 ticky. That was her alert. And she would go around helping people and getting people out of trouble. And I liked that. I liked watching Kim Possible. It was a chick flick, a chick cartoon. But you should name your life Cherry Possible, Joy Possible, Shauna Possible, Big Ben Possible. Name your life. Get a t-shirt that says C possible, J possible, I'm possible. But we don't have impact on our lives often because our personal issues choke up our possibility. We let our personal frustrations and disappointments 
steal our power and our joy. And I came to tell you the Holy Spirit helps with insecurities. The Holy Spirit helps with anxiety, stress. The Holy Spirit is power. And anxiety is about power. Anxiety wants, anxiety comes to steal your power. He says, be afraid. Anxiety comes, be afraid of all that's going on. You. Be worried. It wants the power. But the Holy Spirit says, I am the power. So don't stress, trust God. When you know you have God's power to complete your mission, your opinions of others don't matter. They begin to matter less and less. And what we need is more of God's power and less of our cultural conspiracy theories telling us to alliance with old school beliefs and don't do this and don't do that. Get in the word of God. Stop this foolishness. Stop believing what everybody say. Read the word for yourself. Don't even take my word for it. Read it for yourself. And along with this systemic racism, hatred that has been grained into us, thinking you can't do it because the system is against us. The devil is a lie. Yes, the system is real. Yes, there's systematic racism. Yes, it's true. But God's Holy Spirit is more powerful than systematic racism. So stop believing all these excuses for what is wrong in this world. God gave us power to overcome the world. Well, I'm not taking the vaccine because such and such and such. Okay, well, hey, is God's Holy Spirit not more powerful than the vaccine or what the government, you think the government is trying to do? Do you believe God or you believe the government? Do you believe, believe the conspiracy theory? Okay, say so you take the vaccine, you do get sick. Does God's Holy Spirit not have the power to heal you? Touchy subject, touchy subject. But I know there are a lot of people of color out there who are refusing to get on board with things that can help you be the best you you can be because of something you believed on the outside instead of reading the word for yourself. That's all I'm trying to say. So God gives us advantages, period, with a T. So let us get ready for our mission. I'm possible. God wants to use us mightily. And it will be mighty because he gives us the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. So that's teaching number one. I hope you have a good idea of who the Holy Spirit is. I'm going to go deeper next week. You're going to learn today. You're going to learn today. You're going to learn this month about the power of the Holy Spirit. And you're going to stop saying, I can't. And you're going to start saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm PC, and that's all I got.